Hello there, geographers, and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today, we're going to be looking at Unit 4, Topic 9. We're going to be talking about challenges to state sovereignty. Now, throughout this unit, we've been looking at nations and states, political processes, and much more. Today, though, we're focusing specifically on expanding our conversation on sovereignty. Remember, sovereignty is a state's right to be able to govern itself. As technology has advanced, we've seen states face new challenges to their sovereignty. The world today is more connected than ever before, which has allowed information to quickly spread around the globe. This has allowed people to quickly communicate with other people, create organizations, bond with people of like-minded interests, organize protests, diffuse disinformation, highlight corruption, expose corrupt governments and abuse of power, and much more. All of this can challenge state sovereignty and also lead to devolution. Today, there's countries around the world that are restricting the internet, censoring social media companies, and limiting the information their citizens have access to. All of this is to try and make sure that the status quo stays the same and the current governments can maintain their power. Autocratic countries know that if citizens have access to information from around the world or have the ability to quickly and efficiently communicate and organize with one another, that it could lead to citizens challenging their power. The advancements made in technology and communication promote democratization and empower citizens to have more of an active role in their states. One unintended consequence of this newly connected digital world is the ability for people to disseminate false information. Today, the world is connected by the internet like never before, and this has allowed foreign states, people, and organizations to challenge state sovereignty by using social media and the internet to influence states' domestic affairs and their day-to-day -day way of life. Now, it isn't just advancements in technology and communication that have challenged state sovereignty. Globalization has led our world to become more connected than ever before. Today, businesses do business in countries all over the world. Supply chains stretch across continents and money is exchanged in countries all over the world. This has led to countries forming supranational organizations. These are organizations that are made up of multiple states that strive to achieve certain military, economic, political, or environmental goals. When a state joins a supranational organization, they give up some of their own sovereignty. They have to follow some of the rules and policies set by the organization. Examples of supranational organizations would be NATO, the United Nations, or the European Union. Countries that join economic supranational organizations might have to implement certain laws or regulations on the production of goods and services. They also might lose some control over their trading practices. For example, they might have to reduce or remove tariffs, which would allow for trade to become cheaper and easier to happen between different countries, and would also allow for more specialization to occur. Countries that join a military supranational organization do so in the hopes of gaining more allies to make their country safer and more protected. However, in doing so, they also give up a little bit of their own sovereignty because now they also must protect other countries that are in the organization. If those countries are attacked, then the country will have to defend them, thus taking away some of their own control over their own military decisions. Lastly, countries that join an environmental supranational organization agree to follow certain regulations that protect the world's natural resources and wildlife. This could mean restrictions on air or water pollution, protection of a certain animal or species, or changes to the way the country produces products. An example of this organization would be the Paris Climate Agreement. When countries join supranational organizations, they give up some of their sovereignty. They have to follow certain laws, rules, and regulations set by the organization. However, countries join these organizations because they believe it will make them stronger in the long run. Military alliances reduce the possibility of a country attacking you. Economic treaties allow for more goods and services to be sold in your country. And environmental agreements help make the world and your state a cleaner and better place to be. And just like that, geographers, we're done with another topic review video. This video just gave a couple different examples of how state sovereignty is being challenged today. Now the time has come for you to practice. Make sure you answer the questions on the screen right now and don't forget to check your answers in the comments below. Also, if you found value in this topic review video, consider subscribing. It's free, you can always change your mind later, and it's a great way to support the channel, allow me to make more videos, and make sure you don't miss any of these other topic review videos. And if you are struggling in your AP Human Geography class, consider getting my ultimate review packet. You can find a link for it in the description of this video. It's a great resource that'll help you get a five on the national exam and an A in your class. All right, that's all the time we have for today, geographers. I'm Mr. Sin, and until next time, I'll see you online.